So this was a big day and a vexing question. Michigan mother Jennifer Crumbly took the stand in her own defense, accused for the crime that her son committed. She is charged with multiple counts of involuntary manslaughter along with her husband. Why? Because their son went to school and shot it up and killed four kids. He was 17. It was November 2021. Crumbly answered questions about a relationship with her son, what she did or didn't do, what she suspected, what she did about it. It is a, an unusual case because it is the first time a parent is charged over a student's shooting. Let's discuss. Let's bring do in. You believe they oh, go ahead. Play the sound. Play it. Play it. Play it. Or had reason to know your son was a danger to anyone else. No, um, as a parent, you spend your whole your whole life trying to protect your your child from other dangers. Um, you never you never would think you have to protect your child from harming somebody else. I've asked myself if I would have done anything differently, and I wouldn't have. If you could change what happened, would you? Oh, absolutely. I wish he would have killed us instead. Now, a lot of that won't be surprising, but. How effective is it in the eyes of the jury? Let's bring in attorney Misty Maris, trial attorney, legal analyst, and Florida prosecutor Dave Arenberg. Uh, Dave, support the prosecution uh, aspect of this. Uh, where is the line of criminal responsibility for a parent in the crime of a child? Chris, in this case, it's so egregious what had happened that this is not going to set a precedent for every other case, because we've never seen anything like this before. Here, you had a disturbed child who then, the parents, instead of getting him therapy, bought him a gun. And then when he was discovered by teachers to be researching ammunition in class, the school called the parents and the parents didn't respond. The mother then texted the child, LOL, I'm not mad at you, I just don't want you to get caught. And then the next day when he's drawing these disturbing drawings showing that he's ready for a school shooting, he gets sent to the principal's office, the parents go in there, and instead of taking him home, they leave him there. Instead of checking his book bag, they, they leave him there. They don't check it. And in fact, they don't even mention to the school officials that they had bought him a gun. He had access to a gun. So when she says there's nothing she would have done differently, that is awful. And I'm hoping the jury will see through that wow. when cross-examination comes tomorrow. But Dave, she has to say that. If you get on the stand in your own defense and say, yeah, I really messed up. I should have done this, this, and this, you know, you're basically admitting uh, that you did something that could be formulated as a crime. But... I digress. Misty Maris, um, to Dave's point, uh, the school uh, was reaching out. Well, but the school also said he didn't have to go home. And the school also had uh, concerns about what he was up to and what he was about. And they let him stay in school. Is that a mitigating factor? Does that reduce the chance that you extend criminal responsibility to the mom? Yeah. And, and by the way, Dave makes brilliant points on the prosecution side. But these are the issues the defense is really going to focus on. There's causation. That's a factor here. And so uh, what the argument will be is that there's an intervening a cause, an intervening criminal act by Ethan. What you point out, Chris, the school, their involvement. Now, the school, at the time, they have this meeting. There were two just diametrically different uh, accounts of this. And Jennifer Crumbly said the school gave them a choice. Uh, he can go back to class. They did not deem him a risk. What actually corroborates that is the testimony by the assistant principal who said, well, we didn't escalate this because he didn't seem to be a risk. And had we escalated it, then they would have had the ability to search his backpack. They didn't Doesn't do that. Doesn't it shock you a little bit how schools in this country kind of pick and choose what to be outraged by? And it's like, you know, if somebody doesn't say the right thing, they go nuclear. And then you have a situation like this where they kind of like seem to tend to take it easy. Everybody's so afraid of litigation, but not all the way across the board. And brilliant is a strong word for Arenberg. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Not that you aren't brilliant and handsome, but Brother Arenberg, you left out the biggest bat that they had to swing at her today, which was when the mother heard about a shooting at the school. Not who shot at the school, but a shooting at the school. She texted her son, Ethan, don't do it. Her explanation, I thought he might hurt himself. Does it matter? And is this what we call in the law dispositive of her guilt? Is this the fact that will change everything? 
It matters. And by the way, thank you, Misty. I think you can call me brilliant anytime. <laughs> it does matter. Answer. Don't be touchy. It, it's Continue. Not, <laughs> I'll take both. It, it, it's not dispositive. You know what else is important? It's the consciousness of guilt. Why did she run and hide after her son was arrested? Did she not regret that? It shows that she knew that she did something wrong. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.